Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Dragon Ball Daima. Yes, I didn't say Common Rider, except when I just said it just then. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Dragon Ball Daima Episode 3. So I'm a little bit late on this, I apologize about that. I kind of had a busy day Friday and I just didn't have time to put the video out. But these are pretty you know, underperforming videos anyway, but still, I apologize. I am going to cover this still at least for two more episodes through episode five. Um, after that, I'll kind of see because there doesn't seem to be that much interest in these videos, but I do want to keep talking about Dragon Ball, so I have some topic videos planned, and I'll for sure do like a series review whenever it wraps and maybe like some check-ins when like maybe something major happens, like we get a new form or something. I also kind of want to watch the dub on this because even though I've gotten used to the Japanese voices, the fact that the dub is so close, like it's not like we have to wait an enormous amount of time, and I prefer the dub voices, I might want to do that just so I can enjoy it a little bit more. Admittedly, again, Goku's voice has grown on me through watching this in Super, and is just much more fitting as Kid Goku and has a lot of energy, but the fact that they got original Kid Goku back is just kind of special to me because I have so much nostalgia for watching the original Dragon Ball with that, and I wasn't a fan of the replacement for Kid and Goku, Kid and Goku, Kid, Goku, and Gohan, excuse me. So, I don't know. We'll see, but I'll cover this at least a few more weeks. But that's not about the episode. Let's talk about the episode. This episode was fine. I'm still enjoying myself okay, but I feel like we've, we've just spent a lot of time on exposition, which is understandable, but I feel like we've had like two and a half episodes worth of exposition, which, again, is understandable to a degree because you have to let us know certain things. But there was a lot of information in this I feel like I just didn't need to know. I mean, I'm probably going to eat crow later and it'll be somehow important, but I felt like we spent an enormous amount of time reminding us that the air was thick with gas or something. But I felt like 70% of this episode was us in the car learning about stuff. And it just had me thinking about how I almost never know notice exposition scenes where they don't bother me and then recently when I saw the new Venom movie I noticed how many weird scenes there are where like characters just bring up their backstory or exposition casually in conversation like it's normal and then it reminded me of a Comedy Central movie making fun of Lifetime movies where they're like thank you for reminding me of my backstory. I really got away from myself there but at least this felt more natural in the sense that, yeah, you got the feeling it was a scene where we're stopping for exposition, but it made sense because, like, it was Goku and Kai asking questions, so it wasn't like it just came out of the blue or they're acting like giving dictionary information in a sentence is normal. But anyway, we did learn a lot about that in the car and stuff, and there was a scene where, like, they got stopped by fish security and they needed a clearance code, and they spent an enormous amount of time on that. And there was a couple parts where Kai brought up, like, oh, man, I didn't give Kabito the password. So I imagine that's going to come up. I don't know whether it's going to amount to anything important other than probably a comedic scene of Vegeta and Kabito's group trying to get through. But it's just like, yeah, we spent a lot of time in the car with exposition. But the positive side, the things I enjoyed is, as I've said, I really do like getting to explore this new side of the world. And I think it's a really interesting area they chose to pick. Like, obviously, the Supreme Kai stuff is pretty big Dragon Ball mythology, and like the Demon World stuff also, you know, ties back to characters like Piccolo and all that, so it's not like it's a niche, niche area to explore, but it's just not what you'd expect, because like with Super, we're expanding kind of upwards and outwards, where we're revealing literal god-tier levels of stuff and different universes, and this is like picking a very specific corner to explore, which I think is kind of fun, and it's just kind of funny how important Deborah is here, and like, I know, again, there's the Kai stuff and other bigger stuff besides Deborah. But the fact that he's, like, central to at least part of this is just funny to me because I just never gave his character a second thought. Like, I didn't hate him or anything, but he just was such a cannon fodder character for me. Like, I think they did bring up at one point when he was around, like, oh, he's as strong as Cell or something like that, if I remember right. But still, you know what I mean. He was clearly a character that was meant to be, like, a cool design, here's a guy to fight until Majin Buu shows up. But anyway, I just think that's kind of funny. But yeah, my favorite parts of this are getting to explore that world, getting to finally see it, in particular the scenes, like, at the cantina with Goku having that really fun fight where he's also eating at the same time and Kid Goku is a lot of fun to watch there's a lot of energy to the animation and to the performance that's just fun and so those moments are very fun very much evoking classic Dragon Ball just getting to see this new little world but this episode was not only my least favorite so far because the first one was a lot of exposition too like the first half of that but this one just felt like we spent 70% of the trip in the car it reminded me the last time I went to the Renaissance Fair and like the most I remembered from that was how long the car ride was because there was so much traffic. But anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yes, that Lifetime movie parody on Comedy Central. Like, it felt like we spent most of the episode there and then the last 30% was the fun stuff we wanted to see. There was a bit of a cliffhanger, 
of their car getting stolen, I think, by those pirates that they messed with. So we're definitely having some more low stakes adventures, which is obviously there's bigger picture stuff going on, but this obviously is meant to evoke much more of a Dragon Ball thing, which is kind of nice, though, in a way. I'm kind of torn because on one hand, you know, I've been playing a lot of Sparking Zero and stuff, so I'm like, I'm hyped up for some big classic Dragon Ball fights and new stuff. But at the same time, it is kind of a nice change of pace because it can get kind of old, you know, just, oh, here's the next new big enemy. Like when I was catching up on the manga, that's kind of what it felt like. It was like, oh, here's Moro. He like absorbs stuff. And then here's granola and breakfast and yogurt. Just like, I don't know. I do miss that. But at the same time, it's nice to have the change of pace at the same time, if that makes any sense. I feel like I'm split down the middle. Like I am hoping for some classic, more Dragon Ball Z super feeling stakes at some point. But it is a nice change of pace rather than each arc just being, here's the new big bad and here's the next level we need to achieve to beat that big bad. But it's not going to be good enough because we have to wait for Goku to get that level so he can be the one to beat him. And I think, it was Vegeta should have gotten Granola? Was it Granola or Moro? Like, when Vegeta got Ultra Ego, he should have gotten that fight. Like, anyway. So yeah, I'm still enjoying it okay, but I just, I hope we're done with some of the exposition and we can have next week's episode or the following weeks or whatever be more fluid. Like, the last 30% of this episode, but like a full episode. But what did you guys think of the episode? I said episode so many times just then, I'm sorry about that. But until next time, let me know what you thought of the program. Until next time, don't, on program. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell to get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.